Well, I lived for 13 years in subsidized housing on the west side, and I saw the whole area gradually change. What, 35th Avenue area? Uh, 35th Avenue Lovely Van Buren. Area. 35th Avenue and Van Buren, right in the heart. If you don't have a gun, well, get out. Uh, gradually, I saw uh, more and more people moving in, didn't speak English. Uh, Spanish names for businesses started to become the norm. And uh, it was just, you know, you just sat there and think, a little, a little, gosh, this is, you know. Why were you living on uh, And I was living, well, I was living there because I had to have uh, subsidized housing for three apartment. Why? Three uh, room apartment. Why? Why? Because I had a boy and a girl. And by law, I had to have three bedrooms. So there weren't very many available, and that was one that I thought was safer than most of them because it bordered a school, high school? Uh, Carl Hayden High School, and uh, which proved to be true. Uh, it wasn't as, at least on one side of it, and but still, oh, I would say that illegals and drug activity was involved, and this was one of the most. Well, it was the most violent neighborhood that I have ever lived in or ever hoped to live in or can even imagine. It was just constant gunfire all the time. Uh, apartments getting shot up, uh, calling the police all the time. You know, you start thinking of the police as your friend. You don't think police brutality. You think these guys are the only ones that are between us and getting shot. I mean, a police presence comes in and as deters the only thing that only thing that would deter what was happening. And you know, you start to get very sad when a police officer gets shot and killed. And in Phoenix, quite a number have been shot and killed. He probably went too keen on it himself, you know. <laughs> and and I would say that illegals figured in a lot of this crime because, and you know, you live by the gun, uh, you would see cripples, you would see people, young men in wheelchairs, uh, and you would, there would be murder there on a regular basis. I saw a man gets shot right in front of my eyes, right looking out my apartment window. And I knew of many more who got shot that I didn't exactly see with my own eyes. Women right there in the complex got shot. And uh, so, and then, then too, there's this idea that you could always flee to Mexico if you were involved in a shooting. This is standard, and so Gee, that's, that's another new. thing. I never heard that crime, one before. Crime, you can't deter crime when you've got a country there, not as well. You can't catch the murder, that's you can't catch one. the criminals. Because they got Mexico for a refuge. Yeah, let me and that was another big problem. Let me tell you is, something. Uh, let, let me just murders would say. always can, go to Mexico, flee to Mexico. I, I'm from the east, all right? Yes. We don't have a lot of Mexicans. I came out to Arizona for the weather. Little did I know that this place is well, different. Yeah, it's next door to Mexico. But see, uh, back where I come from, uh, we have what is commonly known as white and black. Of course, there's Puerto Ricans on the East Coast. But see, the problem that I perceive it to be, and many of my black friends have told me, if they get in trouble, <laughs> it is real <laughs> difficult to get back to Africa. There's no problem. I mean, yes. That, that's hard to get back to Africa. Now when you're in Miami Beach or something like that, you get a boat and maybe, you, you know, they might not take you back. But here, you just... Well, I don't think the police... Two and a half hours, you're back <laughs> across the border. Uh, the police are talking too much about the great big problem they have when that is a, a, great a major problem. crime is committed. Zap! Those people are gone. And they stay in Mexico or lay low until, and then back. And, you know, that's just what you would see living in the area and seeing a lot of illegals around. So I have to say that I, I, I think the time had come when a crackdown 
everybody that had the power to pass these laws was finally in enough agreement that the time had come and they had to do something, had to get tougher immigration laws. So. Well, let me ask you this question. What do you think started all of this? The white people, when they came in and they got all of this free, almost free, labor. Mm -hmm. And they would go out, they would do the cotton fields and then again, pick up the cotton. Yeah. And, and they got all of these agriculture people out here and they needed to have, you know, cheap labor. Cheap labor, I mean, cheap but labor. But unfortunately, what happens is, is that some of them go back and most of them don't. And like every other person in this world, females breed. And they don't necessarily have to worry about marriage. It has nothing to do with it. So the whole state and even California and uh, especially Texas, you know why no nobody really wants to go to New Mexico? There ain't much in New Mexico. It's nothing. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of pretty, but most of it's owned by the government and uh, Alamogordo and all of those good places. Anyway, I'm just throwing this out mm -hmm. as a non-Arizonian. Yes. So uh, most of the money in this place and most of the people who run this place are in the government. So they're not really that interested in cutting off their supply of, you know, let the government pay for this and then, you know, we still got our uh, minimum wage people coming over here. So they're kind of like getting it both ways. And they're really screwing this state brutally. That's my mm -hmm. personal opinion. Now back to the narrator. Yeah, well, see, uh, he's a white guy. You know, white guys have a lot of power. So well, that's why I know. let him. That's why, <laughs> why, why I let him talk. I could be, I could be faking it. You know that. <laughs> if you don't like him, if you think he's obnoxious, tough. He's he's a white guy. <laughs> so well, wait a minute. that's why I try to get along with him because. <laughs> now getting back to this uh, <laughs> Joe Ohio running for governor holy <laughs> crap oh, I voted against him for the last sheriff thing oh. see that's the problem people in the state have been here so long that they think they're, they're not they're above the law yeah. I mean, they don't, they, we make the law, you don't like it, you know, they give you the finger. So tough yeah. shit, right? So, I mean, this is the way it is. But yeah. unfortunately, mm -hmm. Arizona and anyone who has more than an 80 IQ can figure out what's been going on for the past 20 years. I've been here since 1980, 1996, and I've seen this state deteriorate. And it's been deteriorating because nobody really cares about what's happening with this illegal immigration. Okay, you, you, yeah, well, they, no, uh, I'm just about done. If you, like she said before, you send them back, big deal. They're on the next ship back, or the next boat, or the next whatever coming back here. But keeping them here for a long period of time to prove to them that there's no work, that doesn't make any sense either. So. Hmm. I mean, okay. Well, does it? State's still paying for it one way or the well, other. Well, this is what I think. I think everybody's entitled to their opinion and they ought to express it. That's and true. I yes. agree with you yes. 100%. We need everybody now, to express uh, their opinion. They're going to, turn, and turn I'm just going to express my I'm opinion. Expressing 